once again a horrific story out of South Africa this week, uh, this weekend rather, uh, when it comes to crime, hijacking of a victim and then allegedly the robber shot and killed his five-year-old son. It is just despicable, horrific. And uh, the, the, b- before that, last week also, uh, well, every day, let's be honest, hijacking, spiking stories. Uh, looks like they caught a gang, though, uh, responsible or said to be responsible for a lot of the spikings around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you listen to the charges. It's not just spiking. No. There's rape charges. There was a rape charge. Robbery. Uh, they even caught them at a place, at a Shabin that was illegally uh-huh. operated. So, yeah, but it's just, it sometimes feels out of control. And it's just shocking when you hear a story like this, that a five-year-old child would be a victim, once again, yeah. of of just a crime that has become so commonplace. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hijackings and robbery yeah. and that kind of thing. But why? Why are you firing? There's why? a five-year-old, you want the car, take the car. I, I don't know. Mm. Take the car. Was it last week, the week before? That young soccer player? Yes. Uh, Fleurs in the yes. Shot Luke Fleurs, it wasn't too long ago. Shot and killed, and then you, you learn afterwards I sold his car for 20 grand. Thank yeah. you. That's what his life is worth. Yeah. 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 Like, as you say, take the car, take man. Take the car. And, uh, I mean, he probably has a watch worth as much as what they got for it. Right. But, I mean, it's sickening. Anyway, uh, the last time we caught up with our next guest, uh, we spoke about. Well, robberies, whatever you like to call it, um, criminals operating from garages. Uh, Richard has been in the industry, violent crime investigations industry for more than 20 years. Richard, good morning. Thanks for joining us at short notice. Good morning, Martin. Thank you. This story of the five-year-old is just a, it's just a shocker once again. Martin, yes. Um, if you look at that crime scene, you know you must remember at the time when the attack takes place, the criminal is at its most dangerous. So I was at the scene, and and what I can make out from the scene is when the child ran out to go and say hello to daddy, the attack was taking place. So at that time, there could have been a shouting, a yell. You know, I still believe deep within me, a criminal will not take a firearm and point blank shoot a five-year-old. This could have been a freak accident. I don't like to use the word accident. You know, if I can refer back six years ago, remember the case with Little Tiger and Morris where the child was uh, accidentally, the seat belt clipped around his hand and the robbers drove off. Ah, it's yes. a freak accident. Yeah. Um, the word accident might be too soft for what happened, but I yeah, still I'm believe sure. within me yeah. a robber won't take a gun, point at a five-year-old but, and just shoot. But I think the bottom line is taking a couple of steps back. You should never be in that situation in the first place. Agreed. Correct. These criminals should not feel comfortable enough to actually just do this on a on a daily basis. And as I believe anecdotally, uh, also the, the the crime in the Soshanguve area. It's just escalate. Shushanguve area, there has always been crime, but in the last two months, it has really picked up. So I personally mm-hmm. believe mm-hmm. a group has moved into Shushanguve. They're going to be very active for about, let's say, another month or so. Then they'll move. But as I say, in the last two months, it has escalated quite a lot. Yeah. The mere fact that they feel comfortable and confident to get you when you're arriving back at your family home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That they're hijacking. We've spoken about this before. Because a lot of us might have our guard down. Yes. You've worked. You arrive home. It's family time. You want to see your son, uh, your family, your wife, whatever the case may be. So you yourself, you're vulnerable. Correct, yes. 71% of vehicle hijacking happen in home driveways. 71. 71%. Now, of the 71%, under 2% happen in the morning because the robber does not know what's going to come out of your, your driveway. Okay. If you take the Luke Fleur's case, 20,000 rand for the vehicle. The robbers might have been three of them, four of them involved. So it's not yeah. 20,000 each. It's you take five, I'll take three. So for them to follow you and stake you out for three, four days, Martin leaves home at seven o'clock in the morning. Martin gets home at five o'clock. Yeah. The value attached to the motor vehicle doesn't justify that. So 
so it's much easier in the afternoon or okay. evenings to follow you home. Keep a distance behind you of between 80 and 100 meters. You know, you sit back and think now, but that's far. The reason why the robbers like to follow you at about four properties behind you is they know when you look in your center mirror, you won't be able to see who's in the car behind you, mm. how many people, but most important, the robber knows. Your eye will tell your brain, Alice, fair, they are far. Mm. Now they wait for the sign. The sign could be your brake lights coming on, the indicator coming on. As soon as they see that, the robbers accelerate. You know, if they drive 60, 60 kilometers an hour, their vehicle travels at 16 meters per second. So basically, five seconds later, the robbers are right behind you and they've boxed you in. So what can you do? If you approach your house and there's a vehicle behind you, stop in the road. You at all times want to have an escape route, forward, sideways, okay. backwards. All right, I'm with you. Be careful when the car behind you overtakes. If the robbers overtake you, keep in mind, three, four guys are not going to look out of the window at you like this. The driver might give a quick glance in your direction. The other guys are sleeping, as we say. They go lower than the window. If the end of the road, so they overtake you now, if the end of the road is 100 meters and shorter the distance they normally overtake accelerate make a u-turn and come back mm -hmm. how many times have you seen on social media an attack takes place but the robbers ran in on foot and they force the owner of the property to reopen the mm. gate if you go earlier you'll see they overtook accelerate u-turn come back if they now overtake you and they see how the end of the road is far, they normally overtake, go about three houses down, and they normally select the driveway on the opposite side of the road. It's purely to give them better visibility. So as soon as your gate opens, they reverse and they race up back to your gate. So stop in the road. If the car overtakes you, the danger is still there. As soon as you've opened the gate and you've entered, stop. The gate must close behind you immediately. Don't enter and leave the gate open because the deeper in you go, the deeper the robbers must follow and that is when hijacking rolls over it's into murder. house robbery yeah. sometimes i think you're probably at your most comfortable tired end of the day you're not even thinking about that no to get home yeah it's the little things for me like i know that's gonna sound silly but as soon as i'm driving home i'm like oh i must go to the loo yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I know that I'm nearly home. What and am so I going to have for dinner? What am I going to have for dinner? Oh, I mm. must get the stuff out of my car quickly. Yeah. Oh, I wonder. But really good tips coming in from Richard. When you get home, don't stop against the gate. Yeah. Stop in the road so that you can get away. Mm. Right? It, it, it's those little things. And I tell you now, they, they can help. They can save your life. Correct. And get you to react and prevent it. Quick uh, question or two coming in. What do you do in a situation where there's road rage and you have someone that is on your tail and he wants to follow you and he wants to fight. Oh, road rage is a thing, especially in Gauteng. And eh? they want to follow you home. Yeah. yeah, It's most commonly referred to as red mist, where the person goes ballistic behind you. He's aggressive. You don't know what the circumstances are, what day he's had, what he's, uh, as I say, circumstances. The best is to try and de-escalate the story. When you see you being followed, make your phone calls. You know, phone uh, police. Maybe you've got a tracking system in your vehicle. At that time, you want to make contact with someone and get to a place where there's people around. That could be a filling station, maybe a shopping mall, whatever the case might be. It's sad in Gauteng, you know, especially, uh, I'm sorry to say this, guys that drive the buckies, they tend to be a little bit more aggressive where they shout and swear. And the quickest to start road rage is to shake your head at someone. Ignore when they come past you, doesn't matter how the person drives, sit and think, thank you, he didn't bump me. Go and irritate someone else. Don't get involved. Don't shake your head. Oof. Okay. Easier said than done. Yeah. 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 Breakfast with Martin Bester.